Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Legit, back again with another video this week for you guys. But before we get into this week's video, I want to remind you guys that soon I'm going to be giving away some LDM Street R type motorcycle gloves. They are awesome gloves. I'm just working on a review of them at the moment. So to stay tuned when that is out and when you can win these gloves, make sure the bell notification is hit and you are following me on not just YouTube, but on Instagram too. All right, so let's crack on with this video. So you're about to see the shocking moment a 16 year old boy was gunned down outside a chicken shop in South London by a motorbike rider. Yeah, that's awesome. that's a great job the teenager is currently fighting for his life in hospital following the drive-by shooting in front of the Tasty Chicken restaurant in Tooting at 9.45pm. CCTV shows the victim standing outside the shop with a group of friends waiting for their food before a bike pulls up and shots are fired into the crowd. Amazingly, the teenager mustered up the strength to get to his feet and staggered off for help. With blood pouring from his wounds, he was taken inside an apartment on a nearby street to wait for police and ambulance to arrive. Detectives are currently hunting the gunman, and as of yet, no one has been arrested. Dramatic footage also shows bullets penetrating the shop window and whizzing by a worker, Jerome Valentine, who's 38, and a customer who ducked down in terror. Speaking from behind his counter on Friday, Mr. Valentine said the shooter pulled up on a motorbike and shot the boy outside. Thursday's night shooting comes amid 36 deaths in the capital in just four months. A moped thief and his knife-wielding accomplice cornered a man in his 60s before trying to steal his 10,000 pound watch on a wealthy street in London. Shocked bystanders could only watch as the thugs waved a 12-inch blade at the 60-year-old on South End Road, Hampstead on the 10th of April. The victim scrambled out the passenger side door of his car and ran away when the bike approached his vehicle. Police said he was chased into a garden where he was forced to hand over his watch at around 3 p.m. The street is known as Millionaire's Road as it houses rich celebrities such as Ricky Gervais, Nicole Appleton, Boy George and Sam Smith. A photographer witnessed the incident and took high quality pictures of the suspects. It was initially thought the moped driver was a young girl due to his feminine eyes, but police have now confirmed it was two males. The victim's hand was also injured in the struggle before the robbers fled on the bike, which had its number plate covered. It's the latest episode in a string of violent moped robberies in London, which have seen cases leap 30 fold in half a decade. So I've got a question for you guys. How do you think these two guys found out this man had a 10,000 pound Rolex on? How do you think they did it? Social media, do you think the guy was bragging about his watch? If you've got an idea, drop a comment down below in that comment section and let's try and get the best idea pinned at the top. Again, moped riders have staged a smash and grab raid at high-end jewelers, Tiffany and co making off with a significant amount of items. Police were called at 2.56 a.m. on Friday to reports of a transit van had driven into the front of the luxury jewellers on Sloan Street, West London. Scotland Yard said a number of people on mopeds had stolen a significant amount of items from the shop window. Smashed glass display cases could be seen inside the cracked window which had been rammed off its frame. The raiders then fled on mopeds, leaving the van behind at the scene, the force added. Detective Inspector David Watkinson said the force was particularly keen to speak to motorists who may have caught the overnight raid on their dashcam footage. He added, this was a brazen and targeted incident which has resulted in significant amounts of items stolen. Although the incident took place overnight, it is a busy, well-lit area. Three teenage boys have been arrested after footage of a moped rider kicking a police car circulated on social media. The shocking attack, which was filmed at traffic lights on Friendsway between Car Lane and Alby Road, was posted to YouTube by the Lock It or Lose It gang, who brag about stealing motorbikes from across Hull on social media. The video shows the rider on a motorbike alongside a police car. They drive around the front of the car before kicking it, going around to the other side of the car and then punching the passenger side window. When the traffic light turns green, the police car speeds off and the biker follows it for a while, doing a really crap wheelie. Humberside police said they have since arrested three teenage boys and said behavior like this will not be tolerated. 
Detective Chief Inspector Matt Peach said, We are aware of the footage circulating on social media, which shows part of an incident where a person on a moped caused damage to a police car and threatened the PCSOs inside. The PCSO in the car called for backup as soon as they could, but they were unable to pursue the rider safely at the time. A patrol car quickly arrived alongside the police helicopter. Three teenage boys, who for legal reasons can't be named, have been arrested in connection with this incident. They've been released under investigation while investigations continue. This next one is a bit of a change from the usual tone in my channel, but I feel like it's relevant and I want to share it with you guys. As a guy, we're constantly told, man up, get over it, it's, it's nothing. Sometimes things can get so crazy to the point where your head just doesn't know what to do anymore. You can be in extreme depression and on the outside just look completely normal because you're told to man up. It's something as guys I feel like we need to address and be able to speak more publicly about. This video shows the horrific results of that not being able to happen. Sir, what are you up to? I'm uh, on my way to work. Right, this is what's going to happen. Right, if you don't pay and you remove that vehicle, I'm going to have to inform the police that it's stolen. I'm already, I'm already on my way to work, so... Right, that vehicle is now owned by the court. Now, this is all on camera. I have to tell you, if you remove that vehicle, it is technically stealing. The best thing that you can do right now is to get this cleared. I'll give you half an hour. You're joking, are you? Half an hour? Half an, are, you, are you serious? I'm well within my right to seize this vehicle right now, but I'm not doing that, am I? No, I'm prepared to help you. It's in your possession. Uh, he was just, just a normal teenager. There wasn't much he had to really do apart from, you know, eat his dinner. It was his first real job. He was just excited about being able to earn money for himself. But what he was earning was literally, it wasn't even the minimum wage. I didn't know there was a problem. I think he felt embarrassed. I think he felt embarrassed that, you know, Bayliss had turned up on our doorstep and Jerome was obviously maybe ashamed that, you know, he hadn't paid these two debts. I came home and, um, knocked on his door, no answer, so I opened it up and he's not in there. Obviously we rang his brother, he's with his friends, they just went out searching. We got to maybe half at half ten, um, and then that's when um, Nat and Mike walked through the door saying that they'd found him. To go from just a normal 20 year old who's got a social life, who's got friends, who's, you know, has got things to look forward to and spoke about his future, has never spoken about feeling depressed or suicidal, to then just suddenly find out that he's, you know, he's taken his own life. It's just, I just can't imagine it. feel guilty that you know I just think if only I'd come home if only I'd you know I'd known that he would felt in such a dark place and felt so low that day that morning you know I could have stopped him Jerome worked as a self-employed bike courier for City Sprint delivering blood supplies to hospitals across London. He suffered from severe asthma. During the winter months, he was not always well enough to go out and work. His weekly earnings in the months before his death were between £38 and £89 a week. If you or anyone you know would have been affected by today's video, please call 116 123. It's completely free to call. The Samaritans are there 24-7, 365 days a year and they can help with anything. Don't suffer in silence, give them a call.